All right, so today we're going to look at key features and do some graphing for tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant graphs. And to do that, we're going to start with uh, cosecant, and it is based off of sine theta. So cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of sine theta. So graphing cosecant theta is the same as graphing 1 over sine theta. And so when we try and do that, a couple things happen. Number one, most important thing, is wherever sine of theta is 0, so right here, right here, right here, etc., cosecant of theta will be undefined, and we're going to get a vertical asymptote because the function, the cosecant function, doesn't exist. All right? And then the other key points we're going to think about is what happens when sine of theta is 1. So at 90, or it's negative 1 at 270, it's 1 again at um, 450. So when sine of theta is 1, cosecant of theta will become 1 over 1, and I will get this point right there. Or when sine of theta is negative 1, cosecant will also be negative 1. And because when I take the reciprocal, I get that same number. And so then we have the rest of it. What also sort of over here, we'll get the same kind of idea. Um, and then finally, What's happening in the middle? So in between 0 to 90, so in this part right here, sine of theta is fractions. So they're less than 1. So for example, we know that sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. When I take the reciprocal of 1 half, I get 2. And right here, it looks like I'm really small, maybe 1 tenth. I'm going to get something like 10. And similarly, when I'm over at... Um, at uh, 150 degrees, sine of theta is 1 half, so cosine of theta is going to be 2. And I get this U-shaped graph that represents cosecant. And it's same sort of graph here, so I'm going to get the same thing going right here. And over, over in this part, between 180 and 360, all my values are negative, but it's a similar kind of thing. At 210, my sine is negative one half, so my cosecant will be negative two down here, and I will get, so these sort of, they look a little bit like parabolas, they're not really parabolas, but this is the graph of cosecant of theta. And so the key feature for cosecant is that um, uh, when sine of theta equals zero, then, or, or hits the sinusoidal axis, let's say that, so when sine of theta, so the sinusoidal axis on sine theta is where um, cosecant of theta has vertical asymptotes. And it turns out that that's true regardless of whether sine of theta is actually zero. So when I'm trying to graph something like 3 plus 2 cosecant for theta plus 5, we're going to start off by graphing y equals 3 plus 2 sine for theta plus 5. That's sort of going to be our starting spot. And as we've done before, we have to find our parts. We know we have a sinusoidal axis at 3. So I'm going to kind of sketch that in. Remember, that's not an asymptote. That's just a guideline. From there, I go up and down 2. So up and down 2. Um, my period is 360 divided by 4, which is going to be 90 degrees. And my phase displacement is 5 to the left. So at negative 5, I will be, and remember, sine starts on the sinusoidal axis, so I'll start right there. Uh, I will come back to the sinusoidal axis again 90 later at 85. I'm drawing a very rough scale. In the middle, which would be 45 away, so at 50, I will be once again on the sinusoidal axis. And then I hit my high and low points halfway in the middle. So, so far we know that this is our 90, this is half of that. 45, 45, and then half of 45 is 22.5. So if I go 
down 22 and a half from 50 or up 22 and a half from negative 5, which so at about 17 and a half. Right? Okay, my scale is really bad. Do you get the idea? That's where I'm going to hit the top and 22 and a half up at 77.5. I'm going to hit my bottom. And there is my sine graph that's sort of my basis. And I could keep going in that manner, but I have at least my five key points that I'm going to look for. One, two, three, four, five. Now, when I want to graph cosecant, the asymptotes for cosecant come still where sine hits the sinusoidal axis. So even though it's not a y value of zero anymore, my, my asymptotes come from the same spot. It's the same idea. So right there, shoom, I get my asymptotes. And then to graph it, the points in common, the low points on a secant graph turn out to be the high points on the sine graph, or the low points on the sine graph. Right down there, right up here, right down here. So if I can clear some of this, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's try and clear some of this away. Nope, this right here. There we go. And so the red graph is actually my graph. This green graph, if I can get rid of that, um, right, that I don't want. I don't really want all these asymptotes. Now, if you can erase on your paper all of the things that I built it off of, that red graph right there is my cosecant graph. And I have some key points. I've labeled the x coordinate of all my asymptotes, and I know where all of my sort of maxes and mins are for my cosecant graph, both with x coordinates and y coordinates. And that's what we're going to be looking for when we come to the test. So that's a cosecant graph. Um, a secant graph is going to be built off of a cosine, because secant is 1 over cosine of theta. And remember, we know that secant and cosine are reciprocals because one of them has the co, one does not. So now the inflection points of cosine of theta become my vertical asymptotes of secant of theta. So right here is going to be my asymptote. Right here is my asymptote, vertical asymptote. Right here is my vertical asymptote. Somewhere over here is my vertical asymptote. Now similarly, when cosine of theta is 1, secant will be 1 over 1. So right there, when theta is 0, I'm going to get zero. And just like with sine, because remember, sine and cosine really are the same graph with just a horizontal shift. So secant and cosecant are really the same graph with just a horizontal shift. So we have our points in common. And sometimes I like to talk about, it's kind of like you make your asymptotes, and then if you imagine a little bomb set right there, and then you explode your sine graph up. So this part right here grows, goes up. And this part right here, goes up and we're contained by our our asymptote so it's sort of like a very contained planned explosion if you will all right but anyway here's our graph of secant of theta and then similarly if i want to graph a graph of secant i'm going to build it off a cosine graph so one of your jobs in this unit will be to figure out which graph am i building it off of so this is going to be built off of one plus three cosine two theta minus four similarly i start with my sinusoidal axis hmm, that's at one there we go i'm going to go up and down three from there boom 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 boom, boom. and then down three one two, three, to negative two. So there's some sort of my borders for my cosine graph. Um, my period is 360 divided by two, because that inside two is going to shrink horizontally. And then this is going to be shifted right four. Now cosine, unlike sine, sine starts on the sinusoidal axis. Cosine starts on the, at the very max. So at 4, right, I'm going to be at the very top. And then I will hit the top again 180 later, which I'm guessing is way over here. Let's try and make a little better scale. I don't think it's going to be awesome. But again, this is a sketch. And so I'm not going to be totally picky about my scales. Um, if I think about where I might hit the low point, that's halfway 
if my period is 180, half of that is 90. So if this is at 4, 180 later is 184. 90 up or 90 down is going to be at 94. That's where I'll hit my very bottom. Um, half of that, half of my 90 is 45. So 45 up or 45 down, 45 up from 4, 45 down from 94 will be uh, 49. And similarly in here, if I go 45 up from 94, I get 135, 139. And that's where I will hit the sinusoidal axis, okay? So for cosine, we have this nice sort of curve. We're concave down, and then we're concave up, and then we're concave down. And I could go back 45 to negative 41. We'll put me right here, and back another 45, right, and so on. And you can imagine it going. But now, this is actually not the graph I'm interested in. But this is what I'm going to build it off of. So I find my locations where cosine hits its sinusoidal axis. And that's where secant will have its vertical asymptotes. And then where I'm at the very top, so where I get the very top value is where I'll have my very bottom value of my secant, like so, and like so. And then the graph that I want is really my, um, is the, the green one. And there it is. So there's your 1 plus 3 secant 2 theta minus 4. So what do we have left? We have our very favorite tangent and cotangent. So if we think about this sine of theta, as we've said, here's my little picture. Here's my y. Here's my x. Sine of theta is y over r. Cosine of theta is x over r. Tangent of theta is y over x. But if you think about this, r sine theta is y. r cosine theta is x. So y, r sine theta over x, r cosine theta, y over x, is the same as sine theta over cosine theta. And we're going to use that to help us graph tangent. When will sine theta over cosine theta equal 0? When our top, whenever sine of theta is 0, which happens at 0, 180, 360, etc. And when will the function be undefined? If we're just thinking about tangent, when cosine theta is 0. So at um, 90, 270, uh, 450, etc. And I'm going to use that to graph tangent. So tangent will be 0 when sine of z is 0. So at 0, at 180, at 360, at negative 180. And it is undefined at 90 and 270. And so undefined is going to mean vertical asymptote. Negative 90, vertical asymptote. Um, we know that at 45 degrees, our tangent is 1. And at 30 degrees, it's you know uh, root 3 over 3. And here it's root 3, which is bigger. And we get negative 1. And we get this kind of shape right here. Between 0 and 90, all my tangents are positive. From negative 90 to 0, all my tangents are negative. And this pattern keeps repeating because at um, between 90 and 180, in quadrant 3, tangent is negative again. No, in tangent, quadrant 2, tangent is negative. And then I go to quadrant 3, and tangent is positive again. But it keeps repeating. So our tangent repeats like this. That would be, what, another 90 away at 450, like so. So there's our tangent graph. All right. And then our last graph is cotangent. And so cotangent is similar. But if we come back and we think about cotangent, cotangent will be 0 when it, the top is 0 again. But in this case, that's when cosine theta is 0. And cosine is 0 at 0, 90, 270, etc. And cotangent will be undefined when sine theta is 0, which is at 0, 180, 360. 
And so if I come to my cotangent graph, I am undefined at 0 and at 180. And I equal 0 at 90 and negative 90 and 270, et cetera. Um, if we think about our signs, we get a similar kind of graph that little, it almost looks like an x cubed, but it's not. Um, from 0 to 90, cotangent will be positive because I'm in quadrant 1. Quadrant 2, cotangent and tangent both are negative. So here's what happens there. And then from 180 to 270, cotangent is positive because that's quadrant 3 on my circle. And then I'm going to be... Um, negative down there until I get to 360 where my next asymptote is. So here's our graph. Uh, this is going to go like this and then like so. So you can think about quadrants when you're trying to figure out where to put this graph. And that's it. So you should be able to do some graphing.